Hello everyone. So now I move from diagnosis making of uh, conditions resulting into female lead out obstruction to how to manage these problems. And I don't intend to give you a very detailed version of treatment, but just still here outline you the principles of treatment. And rest, I am sure you'll be able to build upon these areas. So I'm just touching upon some common conditions of female lead out to obstruction. And uh, suppose you have a youthful tarankal, right? And if you see it in a natural history or progression, a patient comes to you in an early stage, a small karankal like a like a like a pea size karankal, and uh, it is not very infected, it is not very ulcerated. Then you can manage this by topical estrogen. But if patient comes to you in little advanced stage where it is big one and it's bleeding a bit and it painful a bit, so this needs a cauterization. But if the patient comes in advanced stage where it is a, as big as almond in size and is ulcerated and giving her lots of problems, then you have to do an excisional treatment. So friends, you treat as per the stage of the disease and severity of the disease. In a patient who has a urethral stricture, again see the natural history. In the early part of the disease, it is in fact kind of mucosal adhesions. Some inflammation in the urethra and mucosa gets inflamed and get adhered. These are just soft sanikia kind of things. And when you dilate these patients, you notice just click, hardly any click during dilatation and it opens and it remains fine for the rest of the time. This mucosal adhesions therefore should be treated by dilatation. Sometimes it requires a self dilatation by the patient for some duration. But if the structure is little more progressed, where you have a, the wall of the urethra, the muscular wall of the urethra, the mucosa in full thickness getting involved in a segmental fibrotic process. Segmental means either distal or middle or proximal. Then you need sometimes in these patients an otis a urethotomy. Uh, those of us who do this a method are very happy with it. It works fine in many patients. But if the disease is more established and you find that patient has had undergone dilatation once or twice and she has having recurrent uterine stricture disease and getting complicated because of the stricture disease, then she requires uh, some kind of a urethroplasty procedure. And this is a very big topic for us, urethroplasty for female uterus stitcher. Uh, I'll tell you sometime later. Uh, if the patient has a primary bladder neck obstruction, primary bladder neck obstruction, again, if it is in the early stage where the detrusor pressure is high and this is called kind of compensated obstruction because of increasing resistance at bladder neck, Get to the generates little higher pressure and patient is able to maintain a urinary flow a little bit and sometimes she notices obstructed flow. This patients can be treated by pharmacotherapy and this pharmacotherapy is either alpha blocker or else topical estrogen or a combination of both depending upon the age of the patient. If it is a little more advanced in a decompensated phase a patient retaining significant post white as the urinary volume, then these patients require clean intermittent self catheterization to manage them. Or if the patient has come to you in a complicated stage where the patient has developed tension in urine or dilated upper tracts, then I have done in these patients a bladder neck incision also. And there's a video on YouTube uh, by me which shows you a technique of incising bladder neck in females. So here again, I am sure you are appreciating that treatment is given to the patient depending on the severity of disease, the severity of disease and stage of disease. 
if the patient comes to you with underactive bladder and then if the symptoms are early stage and you notice that amount of residual urinary volume is mild to moderate only, these patients can be given a device for timed voiding and double voiding and they are fine. But if you notice large post wide residual urinary volume and these patients have to be given in addition to the former one, the bethanocol or coenzyme Q, some patients respond to bethanocol, not all. And probably it's an individual difference in the response, individual uh, difference in their metabolic profile. But if the patient comes to you with chronic urinary retention, with or without upper tract changes, these patients require clean intermittent cell catheterization. So here again you notice that treatment is given to the patient on the basis of the stage of the disease and the, the severity of disease. And that is the point I want to make in this small talk. Female bladder of obstruction, friends, is a, a complex clinical syndrome and a variety of diseases have a common presentation, storage and outlet symptoms. This requires a very systematic way to arrive at a diagnosis. I have shown you my mm -hmm. formal videos mm -hmm. and then it requires a systematic approach to treatment also. So thank you very much for your patient listening. In case you have any questions or comments, please write to me on my email.